So, without further ado, Doug, get the fuck up on the stage. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You know, sometimes I come up here and try to be a comedian. This isn't really comedy tonight, so don't worry about laughing or anything. I'm just talking with you guys. There was nobody on the microphone. The microphone went lonely. Hey, you guys know it's a uh, full moon tonight? Yeah, actually it's a lunar eclipse. I thought it was a new moon. It's a new full moon. Uh, guess where I was the last full moon? I was on this stage over there, and I was doing stand-up comedy because uh, as like a tribute to Norm MacDonald, my favorite comedian, who just died. So like before he went and died, he wrote a book. And um, you know, right now until I start feeling original, I just want to read an excerpt from uh, Norm MacDonald based on a true story, a memoir. Chapter 19, Doing Time. Prison was a scary place. And the first day was worse of all. The first thing that happened was the guards took away all the stuff I'd brought from home. They took away my wallet, my keys, and my 40 pounds of Omaha steaks, and my cake with the file inside. They took away my dirty work hat, and my Norm Show t-shirt, and my SNL jacket, and all the rest of my free world clothes. And they made me wear their striped pajamas. They even took away my name. But that part was actually pretty cool because they gave me a number instead, like I was a robot from outer space. Mine was 6023102. Then they walked me into my cell past dangerous looking convicts who chanted, Fresh meat! Fresh meat! Ah, uh, you may as well stop with your chanting, boys, I answered. I don't have a single Omaha steak left on me. They all got took. The convicts continued their chant, but there was a puzzled tone to it. The guards, they threw me in a cell where the big sullen man was sitting on the lower of two steel bunks. He looked to be about 300 pounds without an ounce of fat on him. He had a square jaw and a dark forelock, which barely concealed a swastika tattoo. Hey, Rocco, we got some fresh meat for you. Don't you believe him, Rocco. They took all my fresh meat in the other room, and I wouldn't be surprised if they eat it themselves. He took his meat before they went to jail. Then Rocco explained the difference between the outside world and the inside world. On the outside, a man rises to power, uses an, using his ambition and cunning. On the inside, you make your way up the ropes one way and one way only, by the number of fellows you can reap. That's why within the jail, Rocco's name was spo spoken in hushed tones. He was a raper's raper. He was staying right here in prison, he told me, because he had all the necessary skills to command respect and prestige. But on the outside, he was nobody. I was no longer his lawyer, just another prisoner. And if I knew what was good for me, I'd better start raping. Now, I've never raped anybody before, and in the free world, I have worn that fact as a badge of honor, mentioned it proudly at dinner parties and at social events. Folks admired me for it. You know, say what you will about old Norm, my friends would say, but he won't rape you. You know, every time I heard that, it made me feel good inside, like a warm shot of whiskey. But here in the penitentiary, the rules have been turned upside down. I wanted to fit in, but the problem was I didn't care much for sex with men. I liked men just fine when it came to watching football games with them and eating Cheetos and playing video games. But when it came to having sex with them, I just had to grim and bear it. You got it all wrong, Norm, Rocco explained. Rape has nothing to do with sex. It's all about power, buddy. You're talented. You know, like I admit, when Rocco first told me that, I thought it was about the damn coolest thing a man could say. But the more I chewed on it, 
the more sense it started to make. Rape wasn't about making the other guy feel small. And then I'd look big and strong beside him. Rape was all about making the other guy feel small. <laughs> So I made up my mind then and there, as soon as the opportunity availed itself, I would take ungentlemanly advantage of some hapless prisoner. To be continued. This is the, not, this book is a, based on a true story, as it shows on the cover. I don't think Norm actually went to prison or had to deal with any kind of prison rape. I don't have anything else to say after this. I just wanted to get up and read that. Um, so let's get me the hell off the stage for now. And uh, let's bring up KML Kyle Mason Lee. What? Do we got KML? I, that's me. That's you, buddy. Yeah. Come on up. For what? Let's hear another one. I don't know. You're next. Call to the next. I'm very easy to follow. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys. I love you. Thank you for letting me read that. It was a good one. Thank you. 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 Thank you.